this beginning book. And a lot of folks probably don't want to read that much from the Old Testament Scripture, but I love them because this takes me back and tells me the truth about heaven and earth. And it tells me the truth about me, where I'm from. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. It says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now that's amazing to me to think that the Lord could take dust and form a person. And not just any person. I mean, this is the first one. This is the first man, Adam. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man then became what we are today. Man became a living soul. Okay? Now, a couple things here. In the beginning, you know, you see the Lord do this with man. Formed him out of the dust of the ground. And I don't think of dust as being a lively thing. I think of dust as just being dirt. And, um, oh, how else can you describe it? When I was a kid, we lived in the country. In the summertime, the dirt roads that were running along our house, in front of our house and around the loop there in the summer times would really, really get dusty. And occasionally a car would come roaring down that dusty road. And dust would just be going everywhere. That don't happen anymore. But back in those days, dust just flew everywhere. Sometimes you would even see dust particles on the cars, on the tire rims, dust everywhere. And it didn't look to me like something that had any life in it. And, you know, of course, we know that dirt, when we plant a seed in it, has the capacity in it to grow and produce life. It's an amazing thing that dirt can do. So I don't think of this kind of as a negative thing to be formed out of the dust of the ground because this dust was lively dust. But the Lord went a little bit further after He formed a man and He breathed into the nostrils of this man the breath of life. And then man became a living soul. Now, the way I have uh, seen things in my lifetime, if it's alive, anything that is living, my experience has been that it eventually dies. Eventually, it will die. And it really doesn't matter what it is, whether it's plants or animals or peoples or trees or just whatever it is, when it is, when it is initially brought forth, then it's young and vibrant and alive, but if you'll just stay with it, you'll see that it will, everything will eventually die. So, it says to me that if you have something that is living, and if you want it to continue to live, then you need to provide something for that that will keep life going. Now, Watch this as we read a little bit further. Verse number 8, Marlon, Genesis chapter 2. It says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Just what this man needs. He needs a garden, don't we? We all need a garden. We need to plow the ground. We need to plant the seed. And we need to take care of the plant then we have the joy of reaping the fruit from those plants. I'll tell you what, one thing I really like about summer is the fruit. I don't know if y'all do or not, but I am really thinking in terms of heading for that peach orchard, because I want to pick fruit. And I stopped and asked, Marcy, I think about you on Hogan Road up there where that guy is. You know, I bumped into you that day, and I was dressed horribly, you're the only one that saw me. 
He's out there again. I stopped him. I said, do you have Arkansas watermelons yet? He said, no, but I'm going to get them next week. Well, that was last week, so it's this week. He should have good Arkansas watermelons. Fruit of the summer. Don't y'all like summer fruit? Do you? I mean, listen, you can eat it and live. Well, the Lord planted a garden for man. This man that he created, he, he designed and planted a garden. And he put the man that he had formed in that garden. Verse 8, I'm sorry, verse number 9, it says, Out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow. He made it grow. And what did he make grow? Every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now before I read further, I can't resist talking about this scripture here just a little bit more. I want you to look at what the Lord did. He made out of the ground to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. And he made those trees produce food. Good food. And then, watch this. He said, the tree of life also. So, the Lord caused to grow. There's no telling how many trees in this garden the Lord planted. He planted trees that were pleasant to look at and good for food. And this is for the man. Amen? Amen. He then says that in addition to all of those trees that he has planted for food that this living soul needs, he put also a tree there and he calls it the tree of life and he puts that tree in the middle of the garden. Now, that's not all. In addition to the tree of life, there is in that garden another tree and it's referred to here as a tree of knowledge. Of knowledge. A tree of knowledge. And this tree produces knowledge both of good and of evil. In this second tree in the midst of this garden, it is a mixed up mess. It produces good and also mixes it with evil. How many of you know that good mixed up with evil is deadly? Yes. But the Lord, nevertheless, has all these trees and He says they're pleasant and they're good for food. <clears throat> now, two other trees. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Okay? Always make that distinction when you're thinking about this. That is, if you're interested. That one tree produced life. That one tree gave life. That one tree was life. And that other tree was just a mixed up mess. Some good and some bad. Some good and some bad. You know, James, wrote in the scripture one time about us and he was talking about the tongue of a man and how unruly and evil that tongue was and he says with that tongue we can bless and with that tongue we can curse right. with that tongue we can do we can say good things 
And with that tongue, we can say bad things. Now, I'm going to just tell y'all up front that when I'm reading this scripture in Genesis, I'm not thinking about trees that are growing out here in the lot. I'm thinking about living beings that are trees in this garden. Man is referenced over and over and over by the prophets and through Psalms as trees, likened unto trees, living things. And the Lord says, listen, I am planting these trees for your good. And I've got a tree of life, and I've got a tree that is a mixed up mess. Is that all right for me to say that? Do y'all know any situations or do you ever have to deal with situations in your life that has a com combination of good and evil in it? James went on to say, you know, there's sweet water and there's bitter water coming out of this thing. And he said, it ought not to be. Well, that that James wrote is an extension of what we're talking about here tonight coming out of Genesis. Good and evil. Now I'm going to skip 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I'm going to go down to verse 15 here in Genesis chapter 2. Marlon, if you can bump it down. And he did that wonderfully, didn't he? Thank you, Mark. The Bible says here that the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden and He put him there to dress it and to keep it. Dress it and to keep it. The Lord God took the man that He had formed out of the dust of the ground and put him in the garden. And He had a responsibility there. Now, the next couple verses here is kind of going to strike right at the heart of where I'm going with this this evening, so pay attention to these next few if you don't mind. Verse 16, it says, The Lord commanded the man. He says, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Every tree. Right? He says, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Now, how many of y'all when you were little kids played silly games that children play? I mean, I'm telling you what, when we were kids we played games. And one of the games that always tripped me with my cousins and we'd get out there and play this thing called May I. Anybody ever hear of May I? Yes. Two people. Well, May I, I don't remember all the details of it, but you line people up and you told them to take now this is silly as it can be, but I'm going to do it again. You would tell them you would give them an order. Like Bob, he's in charge here. We've got a whole string of people here. Little kids, little dumb kids. And you say, all right, you take three baby steps. And so you would have to take one, two, three. And then sometimes they'd say, take one elephant step. Or do four bunny hops or just all kinds of goofiness like that. And the idea was to get you to a certain place in the yard, and the first one that got there, you know, for whatever it was worth, won. Won, won. I don't know what you won, but you... Y'all said, Mother, may I? Yes. Wasn't Daddy man? Uh, <laughs> mother man. Mother man. 
Listen, you see, if you didn't say to Bob when he told you to take three baby steps, you had to say back to him before you moved, Mother, Mother, may I? And then he would say, yes, you may. Y'all see the game? Then that's the way it went. Now, why am I doing this to y'all? Why am I doing this? The reason I did that was because there is a word right up there that I want you to appreciate. It says, of every tree of the garden thou mayest. You don't have to. See, the Lord is not here to cram anything down your throat and make you do it. But He said to Adam, I have got all this goodness out here for you. I mean, I have trees. You can't even number the kinds of trees that I have beautified and set them in this garden for you. Not only are they beautiful trees, they are good for food. And he said, you may eat of those. That included all the trees that he made. Plus, you may also eat of the tree of life. You don't have to. You don't have to eat of the tree of life. You may. But Adam, you don't have to. I believe this about Adam's initial state. His condition was this. I think that if Adam, I think that his, I, I believe this, and this is Dave talking, okay? That if Adam had chosen to refrain from eating the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that he could have remained in that place, with the Lord. The Lord was in there. And I, I, I personally believe that He could have just stayed in there. He didn't even have to eat the tree of life. All He needed to do was eat whatever He wanted. And you see, the Lord planted all these trees. And He said, they're good for food. But He said, also, now I've got a bonus thing in here for you. Adam, I'm going to give you something that will be supercharging to your life. You can eat all this stuff and live. You can just stay in here and enjoy these trees and enjoy this garden. But he says, I have a tree in there that if you choose to eat of it, it will take you to a life like you've never known before. That's the tree of life. Do y'all see what I'm doing? I am making distinctions between trees in the garden that were pleasant and good for food and the tree of life. Oh, and this booger over here. The tree of knowledge. And I'm going to say this next word to you, and you, you can disagree with it if you want to. I don't really care. But that knowledge that that other tree has that is good and evil is a tree of carnal, fleshly lust, and desires of the flesh. And Paul said that the carnal mind is enmity with God. And the carnal mind is a fleshly, is, it's a mind occupied not with the tree of life, but it is focused on, and it's not that the carnal man don't like good. The carnal man can like good. He can say good things. But he also has a mixture of evil in there. That knowledge source is all messed up with good and evil. And the Lord said, listen man, let me tell you a secret man. I want you to know that if you, if you decide 
to be a partaker of both good and evil, you're going to die. Did I get too far afield on that? Now, you can freely eat, Adam, and a little bit later you can give him a wife that she could eat too. Verse 17, the Lord says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. How many of y'all know what it is that Adam decided to do with all those trees? This is the mind boggler to me. He decided not to eat of the tree of life. Remember the Lord said you can eat of all these trees. And Adam said, I, I'm choosing not to eat from that pure, life-giving source. But there's another provider over here of knowledge. Oh, let me taste this good first. I want to taste a little of the good coming off this tree. But the minute that he tasted the good, the evil was right in line. Okay, now, church, have you ever wondered why humanity, as we know it today, is in the mess that it is in? It is because man has decided that he wants a combination of he loves a combination. How many of y'all like combinations? Uh, I see food platters. The combination. Oh, Mexico Chiquito. Happy church. Let's go. People are addicted to and don't even know where and why this thing is in here like it is. But it is a mixture of goodness. It's a tree of knowledge. And oh, don't we want to learn? Don't we want to know? I mean, isn't it characteristic of humans to want to know? How many of y'all want to know? You just want to know. And I don't care where it comes from. I just want to know something. And that's where his mind is. He, you know, Paul wrote this and he said, man's ever learning. But that isn't it. He said he never is able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Y'all know who the truth is? That tree of life that you and I have to choose to eat. You can't be satisfied with a mixture of good and bad in this life. You have to choose good. And that good is the Lord. It's the Spirit of God. It is the holiness of God. Church, that you and I can eat from every day. And guess what? We'll live. And this goes on and on and on. It's a decision. It's the way it was in the beginning with man. Oh, Adam, enjoy. I like it when those little waitresses or servers bring me my food. Don't y'all? And they say, enjoy. Don't they? Do they ever say that to y'all? Enjoy. Even Sunday morning when we run through that McDonald's when they get all that stuff, that little girl, she'll say, enjoy. We we will won't. But the Lord just said, Adam, here it is. Man, my man, I created you. I formed you out of the dust. I breathed into your nostrils my life. 
You see, Adam enjoyed the life of God. And he gave him all these trees to eat. You know, trees to me really are the most amazing things in the stuff that they produce. Have you ever thought about it? Think with me for a moment the things that trees naturally produce. Somebody say so. Huh? Pecans. Yeah, pecans. Love them. And uh, almonds. Do they grow on trees? And how many of you have ever eaten a hickory nut? One, two, and me, Brother Bill. I'll tell you one time, I used to go out and gather up hickory nuts and get me a big stack of them. Uh, Sister Kelty and I'd run and find one of Daddy's hammers and lay that thing on the rock and try to hit it. And when I did, that thing would shoot off that way, that hickory nut I'm talking about. And they were the hardest things to crack. But all the, all the nuts, walnuts, pecans, peanuts, <laughs> I'm checking you. But I love the fruit of the tree. I like the pear. I like the apple. I like the tangerine. I like the uh, peaches. Oh, my peaches. Nectarines. Love them. Trees. How do you do it, tree? How in the world did you do it, tree? You still do it. Every season you come along and you're just producing fruit. Do y'all know what the first three verses of <clears throat> Psalms 1 are? Put it up there, Marlon, as I close. He says, <clears throat> in Psalms 1, 1, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the who? Ungodly. Ungodly. That's that mess in the garden that originated over there. He said, and they don't stand in the way of sinners, nor they sit in the seat of the scornful. That's not them. He said, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law doth He meditate day and night. Yeah. And the third verse, He says, He shall be like a tree. He's going to bring forth fruit. His leaves don't wither. He's going to live and live and live and live because He has found the source of eternal life, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't let anybody take the tree of life away from you. It's the Lord. Amen? Amen. God bless your hearts. Amen. It makes me kind of excited about Him. Don't it, y'all? Amen. Amen. Just to be you know, granted access to the garden. Granted access back. You know those old flaming swords that were sent there to keep the way of life, you know, to keep that old sinner man at Jesus removed those. And He said, I am that door now. You enter in here by Me. You can come in, go out. And you can find pasture. That's food. Life-giving things that is yours. Church, don't despair in this world. Jesus is still on the throne and He's still ministering eternal, life-giving, sourceful, spiritual life for you and for me. How many of you would just like to be filled with the fullness of God? Yes. Amen. Me too. Let's stand and just thank the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, to thank You